Even though a lot of people, myself included, have been very critical of New World and the state of the game, it is still a new MMORPG and that means the success of the game is important to me and it should be important to you as well. Not because you have to care about the game itself, more that you should care about New World because it's new money, new developers and new ideas coming into the industry. It is what we need for a healthier genre, more choices of what to play. You might not like the games personally, but you shouldn't hope for them to fail because the more of them there are, the more chances of something being what you truly love and then you getting that feeling of back when you started playing the genre and you just get really engrossed in something. If anything, New World has shown the world that MMORPGs are still in demand. People do want to play these games and if done right, they can be worth the risk to actually make one. Having said that, of course the criticisms are still valid. It shouldn't have launched in the state that it has, and it has lost a large percentage of their active population already in the first six or so weeks, going from the peak of 913,000 players on Sunday of the opening weekend to 307,000 on the most recent Sunday, November 7th. This isn't uncommon in the MMO genre, and it's not even uncommon in gaming, but is worth mentioning for the record. I believe a lot of people who tried New World were turned off by the lack of content in the middle portion of the game, around level 30 or so, as well as the lack of diversity in early areas, which includes locations, monsters, quests, and just the general feel of the game. Add on to that the extreme amount of bugs that the game has faced and the headlines surrounding New World being mostly negative due to said state of the game, it's clear to see they have a task on their hands if they are to pull the population back and even grow from those previous highs. Not impossible by any means, although a tall task considering the tools and the management that they're working with if the reports are to be true, which you can check out what I'm talking about in depth in the link in the video description. All that being said, the people playing New World love it, and I love aspects of it as well. The genre is better off having it than not. I believe the New World team have done a great job recently in communicating their plans for the future as well as what's gone wrong and how they intend to fix it. And while I don't always agree with their decisions, including launching the game in this state, I do hope that they can recover. So I'm going to use this video to go over what they've been talking about in these dev blogs, and then you can know whether or not it's headed in the right direction for you without having to go find it all yourself and read these massive dev blogs. In the big dev blog, they start out talking about character transfers, which were disabled due to a bug causing a dupe previously, and as far as I'm aware, are currently enabled. They also later on clarify that they're working on cross-region transfers, so from like NA to EU, vice versa, etc., which is something they did say they would allow, and then they didn't have it ready for the first iteration of the feature, but they didn't make it clear in the post that they would still be including it later, which would have saved them a little bit of backlash. In the post specifically about cross-region transfers, they ask people to go give them feedback on how they would use it. So if you want this feature to be prioritised, I urge you to go post on the forums about this and let them know it is important to you. Addressing the economy, they show their internal numbers for how gold distribution is working, which they do explain in detail, and it seems that gold for players level 1 to 35 is good, and then there's a decent amount of level 40 to 59, but at endgame when people get to 60, they just don't have a lot of money, which puts pressure on the economy the more people hit level cap, which of course at this stage of the game, a lot of people are. They plan to address this by making the auction house global instead of on a city by city regional operation, it's no longer going to be local. Now personally, I disagree with this change from a gameplay perspective. I think it devalues the idea of what the game world exists to do, but it is undoubtedly better from a player convenience perspective, since travelling between areas to find goods or cheaper goods was a time sink many wouldn't do or would feel frustrated by. This, in my eyes, is a very quick, dirty band-aid fix to a problem that could have been solved by other means. Obviously this is their game, and the direction they want to take with it is clearly that of a mainstream appeal, so niche features like local economy and identity seem to not be what's important to them. But this isn't a change you can reverse very easily, which is why I would like to see half measures before just going full in balls deep down to the hill. I believe the better change fit in for the flavour of the game would have been to make outposts linked based on ownership of territory within factions. For example, if the city is owned by Syndicate, the outpost is linked to other Syndicate territories across the map. More features to make being part of a faction feel impactful, and act as further incentive to conquer specific territories. If that doesn't work, you could of course try something else at another half measure, but once you make it global, you can't really make it not global anymore since it feels like taking away a feature people will lazily get used to and then complain about it if you remove. 
although I am willing to recognize they have data I do not, and perhaps the local banking was something that made disproportionately large amounts of people quit the game. And I'm obviously speaking from the perspective of wanting the game to feel unique in the way New World should feel as a game, using that three-way faction war system to influence larger decisions and parts of the game, whereas the people making decisions at Amazon Game Studios might necessarily be looking at what is going to make it popular due to money. Moving on, they address how they've dealt with the dupes, fixed exploits, and how they're going to deal with gold sellers, of which there are many in New World, partly due to the Steam Family Share feature, which we will soon address as that has also changed. Basically, they just put in some little barriers to stop people being able to trade on brand new accounts before they've done specific quests and leveled up. Not a insurmountable barrier to combat the issues, but they are a quick, dirty fix for new accounts, and certainly better than nothing. So they also address the client side authority issue. If you didn't know, people were making themselves invincible in the game by putting the client into windowed mode and dragging it around while rolling, which gives them a frame of invulnerability or using abilities that make them not take damage or be unable to die. And then obviously just moving that window around, which for some reason was stopping the server understanding that you were, you know, still there and able to be killed. This showed that somewhere along the way, the client was responsible for things that it should never have been responsible for, and it was being abused for competitive advantages. Now, this should never be the case in online games, just full stop. The speculation was that the client was authoritative based on this, but it has since been explained that it is not, but there were bugs that made the server wait for an input from the client before processing certain outcomes. This does not mean the whole client has authority, just that the game is coded in a way that allows for client authority in some circumstances, as far as I understand, which mostly comes from an explanation from a developer on Twitter who has worked at Amazon Game Studios and was public about the issues with the game's code. Again, link in the video description if you are interested in the behind the scenes reason why New World has so many issues as a game. Relevant point to this being that the engine they use to develop is pretty shit. They clarify no players are banned without a human seeing the reports and pressing the ban button. Again, for context, people have been reporting since day one of the game that they are getting mass reported and banned in game with no appeal process possible for not doing anything wrong. Something that is not unheard of and has existed in multiplayer games for a long time. The most public and recent example besides New World would of course be World of Warcraft Classic when that came out. People were abusing the report feature to get people banned that were going for, say, the Scarab Lord title. New World have maintained publicly that they have no automated ban system in the game and clarify here that anyone reported enough gets pushed to the top of the queue and then a human reads the logs and chooses to ban or not. Now it's not unheard of for people to be toxic or cheat in a game and then get banned and claim they didn't do anything, especially when a lot of that's going on and it's possible that somebody got banned for nothing and it was human error on Amazon's side and then obviously other people started seeing that were slightly toxic in chat and then started saying, oh, it happened to us too. And it perpetuated this big narrative of there is an automated ban system. That is a possibility, or it's possible there was an automated ban system and they turned it off, or there's a million other possibilities. The fact is we can never know, you know, who's telling the truth because we don't have access to the logs of players who claim to have been banned for no reason. And we obviously don't have access to Amazon systems to see whether they do have automation for this. It's also very possible that Amazon Game Studios are banning people for very light infractions where they're not really saying or doing anything wrong or, you know, using a naughty word that the, the profanity filter should filter out if people don't want to see it, which is a little bit soft touch in my opinion. But obviously if that is their terms of service, that is their choice on whether they want to do that. So they also address the issue with invasions, which in my eyes have never really been fit for purpose. The invasions are basically Kael'thas from World of Warcraft Burning Crusade at the moment which if you don't know had a bug in the fight making it absolutely impossible to kill. The speculation is that this was left in there purposefully because Blizzard didn't have Mount Hydral ready yet, which was supposed to already be in the game and ready to go, and it would be accessible if you killed Kale. It wasn't until the Black Temple release that the bug was fixed and the boss was killed the very next day, meaning that it would have been possible if they just removed this very easy to solve problem. Right now, no one has won an invasion unless it was bugged in New World, so it's way too hard and this means every few days you're going to get an invasion and RNG lose upgrades to buildings just hoping it isn't the ones you care the most about, which essentially means that you are doing progress in the game and it's not counting towards anything because then an invasion comes along, you're guaranteed to lose, it's rigged against you, and you lose stuff, which plays a factor on the gold economy as well. Think about how some territories in the game are earning less money than others. 
you upgrade something, invasion comes, it takes away that thing, you're just basically pissing money away into a bottomless pit based on a feature that is not working properly. This is weird for multiple reasons, but the main one for me is if they're using this as like a barrier to stop people getting all of the workstations to the max, it just seems like they could have done something better whereby they put some kind of time gate in on there so that they can manage it themselves rather than just giving people the illusion that, oh, you could get all these things leveled up, but you can't because there's just this impassable content there that comes along every couple of days and takes stuff away from you. The second issue is that the guild who owns the territory can only select 10 spots in a 50-man participation invasion, meaning 40 are just randomly selected, which makes things harder, of course, because 40 randoms is likely to be impossible to coordinate. Players are, of course, exploiting this. They're taking the governor role and kicking players from the slots that were automatically assigned by the game until they have only their guild or their friends filling all 50 spots, and they still can't do this feature. This puts the content into a weird position again because it exists in a state where it can't be beaten and players are causing conflict between each other to circumvent intended game mechanics and gatekeep all the players from experiencing content that Amazon Game Studios clearly want them to be able to experience. Now I always personally thought you should be able to invite your guild members to an invasion full stop, because it makes sense if your guild owns the territory, your guild should be the one defending the territory, but they clearly want this to be a community based element, so this does feel weird. And Amazon Game Studios have said that they understand both perspectives on this one, the guild and the player base at large, and they're investigating solutions going forward. Now rapid fire for a few of these, they plan to patch weekly with bug fixes and incremental changes and then bigger patches every so often and previously they were patching during EU prime time which sucked so they are going to try and not do this anymore using Tuesdays as an announcement day for when they plan to have downtime so you can play around it. They address the perks and gems situation which if you don't know a lot of perks and gems in the game just flat out don't work or they do something completely different to what they say and they are planning to have all of these fixed by the November update which should be a larger update. They've lowered property taxes. Obviously, Jeff Bezos phoned them at this point and said, what are these taxes you're talking about? But they didn't drop it down to zero because then he might feel less special, have his feelings hurt a little bit. So taxes are lowered. Faction tokens have had their cap increased by 50%, so you can have more faction tokens, which is overall just a good change. And people can no longer send images in chat. And yes, that was a thing. The watermark system is the next big thing in the post that they talk about and this will matter to you if you are intending to reach endgame or you already have and you don't understand this is a thing or how it works. I'm going to link this in the video description if you don't know what this is or you want to go over it as there is too much to read and there's not a lot of changes to go over if you already do know so it's just a clarification on how the system works. Next they talk about PvP wars and territory. They feel that open world PvP is okay but there's room for improvement which literally could be applied for everything. They recognise that flagging is good for levelling, but it just sucks at endgame in terms of how worth it is from a progression perspective. To make it better, they're giving players who are flagged increased luck and reduced durability damage taken upon death while flagged, which reduces the risk at endgame and the repair cost for endgame gear. They're also going to make PvP kills at 60 work towards player high watermark for gear progression, and the long-term plans are to add more incentives and activities to spur open world PvP. Actual good changes here on this one, so there's not all that much to say. In terms of war, they recognise the issues including the exploits and lag that have made the experience super hit or miss and talk about war fatigue since wars can happen every two days per territory, though they don't want to balance the war cooldowns around you owning multiple territories as that should be hard to do. So obviously they want to keep it in a way where if you do own a lot, you're going to have to play a lot and have a lot of wars. They also talk about how hard it is to coordinate wars at the moment because in signups you don't know what roles people are playing so it's difficult if you're not a complete pre-made but there are no plans in the short term to resolve this problem and overall they want the defenders to win the most amount of wars since it should be hard to take land and not have it changing hands constantly. So right now based on their numbers defenders win 80% of the time which is roughly where they want it. Next up they talk about territories and faction balance and how they're watching it closely on all servers. Their current system to address imbalance of player numbers is to not allow players to swap to the dominant faction and they're also giving buffs to influence gain for the lowest faction with more changes to come if this doesn't work out how they want. As well as the issue at the moment Everfall raises so much more tax than every other region that it makes it so much more valuable and the other regions don't raise enough which makes them hard to maintain and upgrade since they just have less revenue coming in from taxes. They have plans to help distribute a main tax income to every territory. Also more PvP territory missions are coming which should give more variety to PvP 
and help to distribute action around other areas so it doesn't turn into just a big zerg with everyone doing the same stuff at the moment. So from me, on the specific point in the main tax income, much like the outpost change to going global, I'm hoping this isn't just a shared pool effect and they plan to make each area distinctly useful in its own way, therefore giving people a reason to be in each area and generate taxes in those areas, as opposed to just making a pool where money is shared, which doesn't solve the problem of certain territories just being kind of worthless both in gameplay and in ownership. I think making each area just better from the perspective of wanting to own it for a specific reason would be an, an overall much better direction for the game, and if you use this in conjunction with my proposed idea of faction-based linking of outposts to make a supply chain type system, this would help to kill two birds with one stone. Beyond this, the devs posted talking about changes to combat, and specifically this blog post is called Combat Responsiveness. Combat has been a big talking point for New Worlds since the very beginning. It's a love it or hate it system, and even if you love it, chances are you would like it to be a bit more fluid since it can feel clunky at times. Their focus at the moment is going to be on weapon swapping, thank god, and also on dodge cancels and attack input windows. They immediately address the biggest problem with weapon swapping, which is where you swap weapons and then you attack and you're still, you know, stuck on the old weapon, which is just really frustrating, it doesn't feel good at all and it's very consistent in the fact it happens a lot. They're working to fix that and they're also looking at the inconsistencies currently with you being able to dodge cancel from certain recoveries but not from others and also of course heavy attack out of other recoveries but not all of them they're trying to make this consistent across abilities and weapons which i think is a fair change either give it to everyone or take it away from everyone but it can't be that some get it and others don't they're also posting a balance update pretty soon attempting to bring some lesser used abilities into line and giving more variety to the game so what people were doing with the Steam family sharing was using one Steam account and sharing it across other people and then obviously some were using it to exploit, some were using it to bot and gold farmers and sellers were using it as well. So they disabled that and then they compiled a list of players who were using family sharing as intended to actually play the game and share it with their family and they're going to grant ownership to those players. So basically anyone who was using that feature legit in the way that it is intended and not using it maliciously got a free copy of, of New World. I think that's about it. Pretty long video, long update, lots of reading, lots of text, and there are more individual posts floating around, but you get the point. They're aware of the issues. It isn't ideal at all for games to be in this situation. We can point out all the issues. We can criticize the game. We can criticize the studio for launching like this, and we absolutely should as consumers. These are valid complaints, but at the end of the day, the game doing good is what we all should want because it benefits the genre for it to do well and it harms it if it was considered a failure. The large companies with the money are the ones that have the ability to give us big polished MMORPGs and if they see Amazon Game Studios come in and make something good that people play a lot, there is a better chance for them to come in and do the same. More companies, more money, more games is exactly what we want. You're not going to love them all, you might hate most of them, but if there's more choice, there's more chance of you finding something that you're going to lose yourself in for years, like the nostalgia you remember from back in the day when you logged on Star Wars Galaxies. Oh God, please come back to me. Appreciate you all. Leave a like, leave a comment on this video if you want to help me out with Algorithm Senpai and subscribe if you do enjoy the content. Check out my Patreon at the link in the video description if you want to throw some coins to your MMO Watcher. There's also a Discord, Twitter and Twitch if you want to come hang out or suggest me some content ideas. And a big thank you to all my Patrons, YouTube members and Twitch subs. I hope to see you on the next one. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.